the professor says as if it's just uh, as true as the fact that the sky is blue or water is wet, that affirmative action um, is, is working. And, and that it is increasing the ranks of the black middle class. Um, again, there was a black middle class before affirmative action. It has continued to grow, but at a much lower rate. I quoted Robert Putnam directly, who looked at this data and said, despite the fact that white educational gain attainment was also rising between 1940 and 1970, black educational attainment was rising even faster before 19, between 1940 and 1970. But after 1970, that catch-up progress drastically slowed in the case of high school and actually ended in the case I of mean, college. This is, a, this is a math problem. When you're talking about growing from a really tiny base, no, of no, course no. the rate I, is faster. I address that. I, we're not talking about simply absolute gains. We're talking about gains Relative, black gains relative to white gains. Whites weren't standing still. They were advancing as well, and blacks were catching up at a much, much faster rate prior to affirmative action in higher education than they were in the, in the, during the affirmative action era. That is the point. The issue is to judge the value of these policies, and I think you can compare them. Using empirical data, what was going on pre-1970, what's been going on since? And the data shows that faster progress was taking place in the pre-affirmative action era. I don't, I don't think the data actually shows that. Do okay. you have data okay, that I'm, shows I'm, I guess you've, quote, you've quoted Robert Putnam. You've and quoted I quoted one, Stephen one per, Abigail Thernstrom. Yeah, I could also right. quote Richard Vetter. And they're quoting and, census and I, data. And I've also just quoted, quoted statistics. Har Harvard's faculty in the 1970s had zero black faculty among the tenured flat faculty in the early 1970s. It's about 8% now. So you can look across the universities in terms of the diversification of faculties and student bodies since the 1970s. And uh, there were black people who taught at Ivy League institutions I'm saying prior the, to I'm 1970. Saying, I'm saying among the tenured faculty in, the, in yeah. arts and science. Tom Soule taught at Cornell. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm talking about, uh, I, was, I mentioned Harvard just then. But I'm not saying that there, was no, there were no black faculty at any, uh, uh, in any institutions of higher education. Of course I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that those numbers have absolutely increased substantially. And only because of affirmative action. Not only because of affirmative Without action. Without affirmative action, blacks can't te teach in the Ivy No, 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 that's not at all what I'm saying. That is not what, that is not what I'm saying. I'm saying affirmative action policies have been part of the diversification of higher education in a way that has been helpful and in a way that has actually worked. That's what I'm saying. That, that's all I'm saying. It's really simple. Derek Bach, who was president of Harvard, wrote The Shape of the River in 1976. They studied s several hundred. No, 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 no. That I mean, came it, out it came in the 1980s, but 1980s. the study is based upon a, a group, a cohort that went in under affirmative action in 1976. And it showed what the, what they found there in that in that book was out of the 700 people that they studied, that at the end of that college cohort's experience, over 30 percent had ended up with advanced or professional degrees, over 300 of them had become civic leaders, and I think around 120 had become business leaders. I have it somewhere in my notes. But that, that's, that's, and anyway, that's the not point, what they found. No, that is what they found. That is not what they found. I can tell you what they found. No, that's, that's exactly that what, is they not found. what they and, and, oh. and what they And what they showed in that study was that those rates were remarkably similar to and very close to uh, the white cohort that they compared it to. No. Yeah. That, that, the, the, that book attempted or, or, or suggested that it was measuring uh, racial preferences in higher education. What Bach and Bowen did not do, however, is to disaggregate the blacks who had been admitted <coughs> under racial preferences from the blacks who had not been admitted under racial preferences, but got into the school under the same credentials as everyone else. They never disaggregated that data. They just looped it all together and reported averages. The entire argument over affirmative action is not whether uh, blacks can, can, can do well at these schools. It's whether the blacks who are let in with lower credentials can do better at these schools. Bowen and Bach did not disaggregate that data. Not only did they not disaggregate it, they wouldn't release 
their findings so that other social scientists could check their findings and see if they could come up with the same results. That book did not do what you were suggesting it did. Well, that was the finding of the book. I mean, you, you, you've offered a discrediting of their finding, and that's what social scientists do. They discredit each other's findings. I mean, I, I didn't come. I didn't come here. I didn't come here to really debate like the merits of affirmative action. I think that we can we can find like we can find examples of where affirmative action has succeeded, absolutely, and where it has has had benefits. C C that, can I, that's really can, can I, it's really a minimal claim. May, may I just make just add, put a finer point since we've been discussing it? Put a finer point on the question, which uh, which gets back to the question I put to you, Jason. Are you saying that affirmative action didn't help, or are you saying that affirmative action hurt, and if so, how? It's, it's, it's done more harm than good, and in a number of ways. Um, a, I, I just believe it's unconstitutional. Well, the, 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 we're talking about the harm or the good. The uh, Supreme Court will decide that. Um, but, but regardless of whether it's, it's, it's constitutional, I think the data show that it's done more harm than good. And it's done more harm than good primarily by setting up smart kids to fail. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, there was a study done of MIT students, black students at MIT some years ago. Uh, black students at MIT had scored in the 90th percentile on the math portion of the SAT of all kids in the country, 90th percentile. But among their peers at MIT, they were in the 10th percentile. So black students who would be hitting it out of the park at a less selective institution were struggling at MIT. You mentioned how after California ended uh, its racial preference policies in college admissions, uh, black enrollment initially fell at the flagship schools of UC Berkeley and UCLA. You're right, it did. Those students, however, went on to enroll at UC Santa Cruz and UC Santa Barbara where they could handle the work and they graduated. What is the point of flunking out of Berkeley instead of graduating from UC Santa Barbara? What is the point of flunking out of MIT or struggling, having to switch to an easier major rather than graduating in the major you want to study in from the institution? And that's what I mean when I say that it has set up smart kids to fail. It is not about these kids not being smart, or not being able to handle the work anywhere, not belonging in college. Mm -hmm. It's about whether they can handle the pace. And it's, it, it has to do, and it doesn't, it's, it's not limited to race. Um, uh, st students who are let in because their parents went to the school, legacies. Students who are let in because of athletic ability with, with lower credentials than the average student also struggle at these schools. If, if you decided to let in left-handed blondes with lower credentials than the average student at Harvard, you would see left-handed blondes concentrating in the bottom of their class. You would see them uh, uh, struggling uh, with the work. You would see them dropping out at higher rates. That is what is being done to black people in the name of helping them. 